It's that time in the month again where we take a look at GPU prices from both AMD and Nvidia, and from both sides of the pond. And with some big drops at the start of the month, it now seems like everything's done a bit of a 180. And frankly, it's all over the place. So let's take a look at what's really going on. But before we do, here's a quick word from this video sponsor. I wish these files would transfer faster. Come on! Whoa, is that the Firecuda 510 NVMe drive with its blistering fast speeds of 3450 megabytes a second read, 3200 megabytes a second write, and capacities of up to two terabyte? I can have these files transferred in no time. And if I'm looking for the ultimate performance, I can even get the fourth generation Firecuda 520. I better check the link in the description to find out more details. Now, if you're a frequent viewer of these videos, welcome back. And by now you should know the drill. But for those of you who aren't, there's a handy dandy set of timestamps below. So you can get to exactly where you want, whether you're from the UK or the US, and if you fancy looking at pricing from both Team Green or Team Red. Also, as you should all be aware, GPU prices have been all over the place over the last 18 months or so. And we've seen graphics cards hit pricing levels that are frankly just ridiculous. But at the start of April, that seemed to have calmed down a little bit as we saw things return to a semi-normal state, whatever that is. It seemed, if anything, that the rumor mill surrounding new cards from both AMD and Nvidia had maybe stoked the fire a little bit. Prices were, as I mentioned, semi-reasonable, more so in the UK than the US, and availability was good. The issue with that is that lots of people went out and got hold of cards and, well, that's had a little bit of a knock-on effect. As always, we set out to find the cheapest cards we could. So if you're looking for something a bit more exotic, like a Strix, Aorus Master, or Supreme X card, then expect to pay a higher premium over what you see here today. We've also added in a lot more cards by request, including 16 series from Nvidia and those refresh cards that were recently launched from AMD. So starting with the UK market and Nvidia, and straight off the bat, we find a Palette GT 1030 card coming in at 89.99. It's not gonna be groundbreaking, but it's something that will get you up and running if your CPU doesn't have onboard graphics. Moving up to the 1050 Ti, which is still a very respectable card when playing games like CSGO or Fortnite. And here we find another Palette card coming in at 149.99. It's a Storm X card, so again, nothing groundbreaking, but if you're on a budget, then you're onto a winner. As we move up to the 16 series, we find another Storm X card coming in from Palette with the GTX 1660 at 248.99. So still higher than where it needs to be considering its launch price, and hopefully we see this drop down a little bit more as time goes on. The GTX 1660 Super is the slightly better buy at 299.99 for an Inno 3D Twin X2 card, but it's still miles away from where it should be again. It definitely seems that the lower end cards are still suffering from these crazy price hikes. The GTX 1660 Ti is able to be had for the same $299.99 price tag, and this time you can get a Gigabyte OC card. So if that's your budget and you're set on buying something right now, it is the better buy for a slightly overclocked card. Moving up the stack to the RTX 2060, and the cheapest right now is again from Gigabyte at $319.99. For that extra cash over the 1660 Ti, you're now able to get an RTX card. So if ray tracing performance is important to you, it may be worth the little extra cash. The RTX 2060 Super sees a huge price disparity between it and the non-Super variant at $469.99 for an Inno 3D Twin X2 card. I'll be honest, at that price, it's not even worth entertaining, and newer cards are definitely more attractive. Moving on to something newer, and the RTX 3050. At the start of the month, the cheapest card from Zotac was a Twin Edge at $269.99, whereas now you'll have to pay a little more at $299.99 for an Azus Phoenix instead. The RTX 3060 sees a similar fate with a £20 price increase for a Storm X card from Palette compared to the start of April. Things are moving, just not in the direction that we need them to. The RTX 3060 Ti has increased significantly more, up to $509.99 for a Palette Dual Card, still way ahead of its £369 mystical SRP price, that I fear we may never see again. The RTX 3070 has also increased in price by 30 quid, now coming in at $589.99, a whopping £120 over its original launch price in the UK. 
The 3070 Ti luckily hasn't been affected too much with only a £10 price difference since our last video, but still seeing a price of $659.99 for a Zotac Trinity card, which just isn't good value for money. The RTX 3080 10GB has seen a small price bump for both KFA2 and Palit cards, coming in at $799.99, compared to the $769.99 price tag that we saw at the start of the month. If you're wanting the slightly faster and higher memory capacity 12 gig 3080, then you're still expected to pay quite a bit more at $979.99. There is some good news as we see the RTX 3080 Ti decrease by around £50 to $1,049.99 for the same KFA2 card. We also have a decrease of £60 on the 3090, with the ASUS Tough Gaming card now the cheapest at $1589.99. Still a stupidly priced card and well out of reach for most consumers, but I think I've made my feelings clear on these higher end cards in other videos and who they're actually aimed at. Lastly, looking at the 3090 Ti and we're actually seeing an increase, though it is for a slightly different card from the start of the month. You may remember at the start of the month, the cheapest was an Inno 3D card, which sat at $1,799.99, whereas now the cheapest is $1,879 for an ASUS Tough Gaming card. So Nvidia out the way for the UK, let's move on to AMD. Starting with the RX 6500 XT, and we see a decrease in price, though only by a few pounds, with the PowerColor ITX card now sitting at £164.99p. As we move up the stack to the RX 6600, and we find that it hasn't changed at all since the beginning of April, still sitting at 289 99 However, the skew of the card has now changed to the PowerColor Fighter model. For the RX 6600 XT, I'm starting to think that they maybe had a power color delivery, with the fighter card still being the cheapest, but it has also gone down by £30, now sitting at £359.99. The newly refreshed 6650 XT is currently at £399.95, with a Sapphire Pulse OC card. But in all honesty, £50 more expensive for a few percent extra performance just isn't worth it over the 6600 XT. As we move up to the 6700 XT, you get a choice of three cards at the same price, with the PowerColor Hellhound, Sapphire Pulse Gaming, and MSI Mech all coming in at $499.99, which is a decrease from the start of April, where the cheapest was $548.99. Now you even get a free one month Xbox Game Pass gift too. Woo! The new 6750 XT sits a whopping £100 over the 6700 XT, which is just crazy for the small performance boost. Again, you get a choice of cards between the ASUS Dual OC, PowerColor Red Devil, and the Sapphire Radeon Pulse Gaming, all being the cheapest. The RX 6800 has decreased from $749.99 down to $699.95 in a month, with another PowerColor card being the cheapest. Maybe PowerColor are wanting to try and clear stock to make way for the next generation of cards. Who knows? PowerColor knows. The RX 6800 XT has increased in price slightly from our last video to $818.99 with a choice of three cards again. You can choose between a Gigabyte Gaming OC, MSI Gaming Z Trio, and yep, you guessed it, PowerColor Red Devil. Moving up to the RX 6900 XT Nitro Plus from Sapphire, and nothing has changed since our last video, with the card staying the cheapest and at the same price. I guess being such a high-end card, there's not much availability at the moment. And finally, looking at the 6950 XT, and the Sapphire Toxic Liquid Cooled card is sat at £1,249.99, again with a stonking one month free Xbox Game Pass, though this isn't much of a sweetener if you ask me. So moving over to the US and starting with the GT1030, with the cheapest card being from MSI at $104. Again, it's not going to be amazing, but will at least get you up and running if you don't have an iGPU. Moving up the stack and we find a Gigabyte refurbished card coming in at $177.99. It's okay value, but is refurbished, so keep that in mind. But for playing some lower quality Battle Royale type games, it should treat you well. As we move up to the GTX 1650, the cheapest are both the ASUS Phoenix OC and Zotac Gaming OC, both coming in at $209.99. Gigabyte comes in the cheapest at $299.99 for their Gaming OC card on the GTX 1660, which is quite a lot more than its $219 launch price, and doesn't exactly offer amazing value for money in the grand scheme of things. There is slightly better value with the 1660 Ti at the somewhat odd price of $304.14. It is another gaming OC card from Gigabyte and should allow you to play most modern AAA titles at good settings at 1080p. 
If you're wanting some ray tracing visuals, then the cheapest RTX 2060 is an advanced OC card from ASUS, coming in at $401.51, which isn't a million miles away from its launch price, but you would expect it to be a bit lower at this point in its life cycle. For the RTX 2070, we find another gigabyte card coming in the cheapest at $549. Again, with new cards set to be right around the corner, I'd expect a 20 series card to be a lot cheaper than this, though the 2070 is still a very solid card. Moving on to something newer and looking at the RTX 3050, which has dropped slightly, now at $329.99 from the $349.99 it was at the start of April. You also get a choice of an ASUS dual card or EVGA XC Gaming, which we've reviewed. So definitely be sure to check that out to see exactly how it performs. The RTX 3060 sees a sizable $90 decrease compared to our last video, with the MSI Ventus card now being the cheapest at $409.99. It still has some way to go compared to its launch price, but at least it's heading in the right direction. Sadly, the RTX 3060 Ti is a different story, and we actually see it increase by around $30 to $569.99 for a pretty basic MSI Ventus card. For the RTX 3070, we see the cheapest card being the Gigabyte Eagle OC, and actually see quite a dramatic decrease from the start of April, now sitting $130 less at $599.99, which, while it's nice to see, it's still around $100 more than where it should be. The RTX 3070 Ti has dropped $100 since we last looked at it nearly a month ago, with both the ASUS Tough Gaming and Gigabyte Gaming cards being the cheapest at $699.99. Again, around $100 more expensive than where it should ideally be. Maybe it will continue to drop as we move further into May. The RTX 3080 10GB has also dropped $100 in price, bringing it down to $849.99 for an MSI Ventus card, which is way above its launch MSRP price. Also, when it comes to the 12GB model, we couldn't actually find any available. Again, we find another MSI Ventus card, but this time for the 3080 Ti, which has seen its street pricing decrease from $1,279.99 down to $1,164.44, which is technically lower than MSRP. Hallelujah. Into the more extreme realms and the RTX 3090, where we see it decrease down to $1,699.99 for an ASUS Strix or Gigabyte Gaming OC, both holding the shared place as the cheapest cards available, though still above its launch price. Finally, for the 3090 Ti, we see four cards, all at the same price as when we looked a month ago, and with no change in price at all. Being the newest card available from Nvidia, you get the choice of an EVGA Gaming, EVGA Ultra Gaming, Gigabyte Gaming OC, and MSI Gaming X Trio, all sitting at $1,999.99, which is technically MSRP launch pricing, but is still overpriced for the majority of consumers. Moving over to AMD and the RX 6500 XT has seen a price drop of $10, now leaving it sat at $199.99, with a choice between the Power Color Fighter and XFX QICK210 cards. Moving on to the RX 6600, it has seen a drop of a few dollars since we last looked, now sitting at $328.99. Again, there's a choice of two cards, between one from ASRock and one from XFX. The 6600 XT has decreased since the beginning of April from $429.99 down to $388.99, with both the ASRock Challenger and MSI Mech being the two cheapest cards at the same price. Moving on to the new RX 6650 XT, it is sat at $399.99 for both the Gigabyte Eagle and the ASRock Challenger cards, and compared to the 6600 XT price, actually makes it a somewhat more viable option, if only it was still a little bit cheaper. As we move up to the 6700 XT, we find another ASRock Challenger card being the cheapest option and now has actually seen a price drop from $528.99 down to $498.99, which is almost MSRP pricing. For the RX 6750 XT, which is one of AMD's newest cards, we find the XFX 319 being the cheapest at $539.99, which is technically below MSRP, though the 6750 XT should have never been that price anyway. The RX 6800 again sees another ASRock card being the cheapest, but this time the Phantom Gaming. The 6800 has also seen a price drop of $40, bringing it in at $759.99. While the price drop is nice to see, still not where it needs to be quite yet. Moving up to the 6800 XT, we find better value for money thanks to a price drop of $59 down to $799.99 from the $859 price that we saw at the start of April. Again, it's another ASRock card, but should hold up quite nicely. 
The Beastly 6900 XT is also seen a price drop and quite a hefty one too of $120, now sitting at $949.99, which is $50 below its MSRP launch price with a PowerColor AIB card. And finally, the RX 6950 XT is sitting at its original launch price of $1099.99, which I feel it will stay at for quite some time considering its competition from Nvidia is so much more expensive. So again, lots of information to take in and a real kind of mixed bag of prices. At the start of April, we hadn't seen much movement in the US market with the UK market seemingly getting the better deal. Whereas now we're seeing a bit of the opposite. Maybe the US are a little bit behind and are playing catch up. But one thing is clear, the higher end is definitely seeing prices fall into alignment a little more. Whereas the mid tier cards, which are typically the most popular are still struggling a bit. Though a few small price drops of $30 here and there are always welcome. One thing I do think is that some of the older generation cards like the 20 series and GTX based cards are going to see some bigger price drops in the next month or so, as new card rumors start kind of circulating a bit more. What I'm trying to say is retailers won't want to hold on to this stock and that will likely see them plummet. Though if the 30 series launch is anything to go by, the price of the 20 series actually went up. So what I'm trying to say is stranger things have happened. Stock is becoming more readily available as well on a kind of range of cards from both sides of the market and both sides of the pond. And that all goes into the consumer's favor with pricing getting more aggressive. I'd say now is an okay time to buy, but so much of that comes away from pricing and availability and more towards if you're wanting today's technology or are looking to the future and wanting to stay ahead of the curve. Without getting my crystal ball out, it's a hard one to judge and honestly comes down to you as an individual. If you're wanting the very latest tech, it's not a million miles away, but it could be a damn sight more expensive too. Let me know, what are you planning to do? Let me know in the comments section below. It will be good to kind of try and get a bigger picture of the market and what you guys are actually trying to do with it. I feel like we have a bit to go for pricing to kind of get back to the levels that they should be. But as I said, new cards are on the horizon and that could screw it all up again. So there we have it. Bit of a weird one, but depending on what country you're in and what team you're on, it could go either way. I will say, as I always do, if you do want some more guidance and help on choosing not just a GPU, but any component or even a whole system, head on over to our Discord. The link is down below and me and other members of our amazing community will be more than happy to help you. Also, if you enjoyed this content, then a like and a sub to the channel would be amazing. And if you appreciate the huge effort that we put into researching content like this, then please consider supporting us on Patreon. You can do it for like $1, it's nothing. Um, link is down below. So yeah, that aside, I'll see you in the next one. See you later guys. Bye bye.